Zim Integrated Shipping Services just released its quarterly results and they are not good to say the least. But let's see, is there a real problem that can destroy this company or is it just a short-term thing that can create an incredible investment opportunity? This company was founded in Israel in 1945 and it is a global shipping company with a fleet of 129 container ships and 16 car carriers. And before we analyze and value Zim, let's take a look at the recent results. The revenue is down by 60.6% year over year. Net income is, well, actually there is no income because they are losing money. Cash is down by 32.4% and the debt is up by 9.2%. So why are they losing money? Why is the revenue going down? And why is the stock price down by 56% year to date? Well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, the container freight rate is down substantially. Since its peak in September 2021, it is down by 83%. Also, Zim is an Israeli company, so the current war in the region is definitely not creating a lot of confidence for investors. Even though Eli Glickman, the CEO, said on the conference call that despite the situation, they are working without any interruptions. Also, Zim is no longer paying dividends, so probably a lot of dividend investors are out, which also pushed the price of the stock down. If the stock is so out of favor, but the fundamentals are strong, then it can be a great investment opportunity for long-term investors. So let's analyze and value Zim and see how strong or weak it really is. If you were to invest $1,000 into Zim at its IPO in 2021, you could buy around 83 shares and today they would be worth around $610. But let's not forget about the dividends. Through the years you would receive $3,191 as dividends. So if we add the current value of shares and the dividends, we get $3,801. So that is a gain of 280% in three years. That is very impressive. Basically, it was a pure dividend investment. And in such a cyclical industry, dividends are very important. Individual Insiders, that is an X. 1.3% of the company is owned by individual insiders. And we would like to see this number over 2%. What is interesting is the fact that almost all of this 1.3% is owned by Ellie Glickman, the CEO of the company. And are individual insiders buying? That is an X. We don't see any transactions in the last year. And do super investors own this company? That is also an X. There are no super investors that own Zim, and of course, that means that they are not buying. Return on invested capital that is a check at 18.3%. And we want to see this number higher than 10%, so that is a nice result. And free cash flow growth? That is a check at 36% annual growth rate. And also here, we want to see this number over 10%. So that is an exceptional growth. Well, so far so good. And what do we know about net profit margin? It is an X at minus 64.2%. What it means is that they are currently losing money. And Actually, they are losing a lot of money. That is very worrying. But the management pointed out during the conference call that 2023 and 2024 is a transition period for the company. 
By 2025, Zim fleet will be much, much younger and cost-effective. One-third of the ships will be powered by LNG, which drastically reduces costs. They are also making other investments in newer containers and tracking technology to make Zim much more competitive in the coming years. And now let's take a look at share buyback. It is an X with 1.9% more shares issued since the IPO. So that is not good for long-term investors, but it's not really a major change. And let's also take a look at the debt. It is an X. It would take 2.4 years to pay the debt with a current free cash flow. And we like to see this under two years. So it is a problem, but also not a major one. Zim Integrated Shipping Services does not pay any dividends currently. They used to pay a very significant dividend in the past, but it was very unpredictable. The idea is that every quarter they pay between 30 and 50% of the earnings through dividends. So when the company is making money, we are making money. If the company is losing money, just like it does right now, we are not getting any dividends. Before we value Zim, I just wanted to share something I'm very excited about. As some of you know, if you are a patron of this channel, you get access to the stock ranking. But from today, the stock ranking is changing. It is no longer only a ranking of the cheapest companies. Now, you can sort them in any way you want to. So finding companies with the lowest debt or highest dividend yield or with management that has its skin in the game is just one click away. If that sounds interesting to you, then go to our Patreon page and get access to all of that and much more for just $5 a month. Now let's get back to the valuation. To value Zim, we will have to estimate its growth for the next 10 years and we will make three scenarios of this growth. And I want to be as conservative as possible while valuing Zim. Not only because the stock is so out of favor and that determines the price in a big way, but also because the management did not stick to its promises. Three quarters ago, they said that they will be profitable by 2024. Now they moved it to 2025. So that is not a good sign. And that is why we are not going to use a current free cash flow. We are not going to use a five-year average free cash flow either. Instead, we are going to use the lowest possible free cash flow. An average free cash flow, but without 2021 and 2022, which were absolutely exceptional for the company. So the starting point is as conservative as it can be. Now let's get to the growth estimates. In the lowest scenario, we will estimate a decline of 10% for the first five years, and then further decline of 5%. In the medium, a decline of 5% and then no growth. And in the high scenario, no growth for the first five years and then 3% growth. Now, why did I use such estimates? Well, the shipping container market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of around 4.2% from 2024 to 2030. Not decline, but grow. But again, let's assume that things will not go the way Zim and analysts predict. Let's be really pessimistic here. So with such estimates, the intrinsic value in the low scenario is $25, in the medium scenario $41, and in the high scenario $60. But these are not the prices we should be looking for because we have to always add a margin of safety. I use a 30% one. So with such a margin, we get in the low scenario $17, in the medium $28, and in the high one $42. And the current price is around $7. So even with a very conservative free cash flow and appalling results for the next 10 years, 
it is all in the green. This company is really cheap. So if you invest it in the right time, the current drop in price should not bother you at all because you already made a lot of money thanks to exceptional dividends. And even though the current results are terrible, if we take a long-term perspective, then the story changes. At the end of 2024, Zim will have 46 new ships and 28 of them will be powered by LNG. In 2025, its fleet will be one of the youngest fleets out there. And the number of ships should be around the same, but the ships will be much larger. All of this should lower the costs and that way, even with rates not going substantially up, they should go back to being profitable. This is a highly cyclical business and it may take years for this investment to really pay off. But looking at the data, it really seems not as bad as the market thinks it is. It is definitely not a wonderful business, but it is cheap and it is during a transformation phase and if all works out, it will have a big advantage over the competitors with the most modern and cost-effective fleet out there. So tell me in the comments what do you think about Zim? Is it an interesting opportunity even without the dividend? Or is it going down? If you enjoyed this video, you may want to check out my analysis of Danaos by clicking over here. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.